Hi guys, it's Xenia. Welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I have a very exciting perfume haul to share with you guys because I have discovered some top tier perfumes that I have a strong feeling will be in my collection forever. Definitely make sure to watch this video because I do have a really, really good dupe for a perfume that a lot of you guys have asked me about where to get it because it has been discontinued and it's like impossible to find. And I think you guys are really going to appreciate this dupe. So definitely make sure that you stay tuned and find out what that is. Anyways, before we get into this video, please make sure that you are subscribed to my channel and turn your post notifications on and let's get straight into it. All right, so I do have kind of like a mixture of high and low. I only have two high-end perfumes and the rest is affordable perfumes. So I'm going to leave that special perfume that I duped in the end. So make sure you stay tuned to the end to find out what that is. But the first one I'm gonna share with you guys is a perfume that I have told you has been on my perfume list for the longest time. I kind of spoke about this in my most complimented perfumes according to you guys video. If you didn't get to see that video, make sure you check it out. I will link it up here. Basically in that video, I let Instagram tell me what their most complimented perfumes were. And this was one of them, which I definitely knew would come up on that list because I see this time and time again in other people's videos come up as being like the most complimented perfume ever. And it took so long to buy it because it's not really a perfume that is so my style of perfumes, but I will say, I think my scent taste is kind of evolving and I'm actually really appreciating a lot of florals lately which is like a crime for me to say out loud because I have stayed away from florals for the longest time. But I think for me to really enjoy a floral perfume, it has to at least have a little bit of sweetness in it. And number two, not a type of floral that is really mature. I kind of like more of like a younger, fresher, juicy, upbeat kind of floral, if that makes any sense. So that is exactly this perfume. So this is Chanel Chance Eau Tendre Eau de Parfum. They do have a Eau de Toilette version. I decided to go for the EDP just because I wanted like the full force, strong, scent of this perfume. I don't really know too much about the notes of the EDT, but this is the one that I love when I sprayed it out at the store. This perfume, first of all, is just, it's so pretty. The juice in it has kind of like this slight little pink hint to it, and it gives off like very spring vibes, fresh vibes, clean girl vibes, that type of thing. I will be doing a spring perfumes video, and you know for sure this will be in that video because this is spring in a bottle. I can't really say that this is sexy or provocative or seductive. The one word that basically summarized this perfume is just beautiful, like pretty effortlessly beautiful. That's exactly what this smells like. So the Eau de Parfum has top notes of quince and grapefruit, middle notes of rose and jasmine, and base notes of white musk. So yes, there is florals in here, but they're the type of florals that smell more so like freshly rained on florals. They don't smell vintage or too mature at all. That rose in here is kind of like, almost like a rose water type of smell, like a really juicy, fresh, almost watery rose, if that makes any sense. And honestly, I would say that this is a perfume that you can wear if you are 15 years old or if you're 50, like it just, it works with everybody. It's not too mature, but it's not too young. There is something sexy about this perfume, not because it has those type of vibes really, but I'm saying that because it's so, so feminine and it just gives off those like natural, sexy, feminine vibes. Like you're going to smell so feminine and pretty and beautiful. When you first spray this out, you get such a beautiful burst of that Keens and the uh, grapefruit. So it's like slightly citrusy, but it's still very sweet. And then the florals kind of come in. I love the jasmine that is in here. The florals are not too pronounced. Everything just mixes so well with one another to create like such a well-blended perfume. I would say this is the absolute safest blind buy ever, no matter what kind of scent that you like. It just has a little bit of everything and nothing in it is too much. You could wear this in an office setting. You could wear this to lunch, to dinner, like such a versatile scent, definitely a signature scent. And obviously I definitely understand why it was in the most complimented perfumes because people go crazy for this stuff. If you watch any video that has the title most complimented perfumes in it, this will be in it, I guarantee you. So that is Chanel Chance Eau Tendre, the Eau de Parfum version. Okay. The next perfume, I could not be more excited to talk about this perfume and the fact that I found it 
because if you've been following my channel, you know how much of a love I have for the original. And I didn't know that there was a flanker until I was in Saks Off Fifth. And I was looking at all the perfumes and I see this and I'm like, I didn't even need to look up the notes of this or anything. I just took it off the shelf and I bought it. And I never do that. Every time I will go and buy a perfume, I do like extensive research on the notes. Stella McCartney Pop Bluebell. You guys know how much I have talked about Stella McCartney Pop. If you watched my most recent Husband Rates My Perfumes video, which I will also link up here, Definitely go check that out because oh, we had so much fun filming that video. But you guys found out in that video that he loves Stella McCartney Pop. He like knows it by name. He tells me, he's like, are you wearing Stella McCartney Pop? He literally recognizes the perfume. So this is the original Stella McCartney Pop and this smells like the scent of Barbie dolls. It smells like plasticky sweetness. It's somewhat floral, it's somewhat fresh, but honestly, I find this a very inoffensive, sweet scent. I cannot describe this scent. It's so unique to me. I've never smelled anything like it. There's tomato leaf in this perfume, which sounds so odd, but trust me, trust me, you need to give this perfume a try. Men go crazy over this stuff. Like I said, just go watch my husband rates my perfumes video and you'll see, but the bluebell version i had no idea about so the packaging basically looks exactly the same it just has a purple cap so just for the sake of kind of comparing the two the original stella mccartney pop has top notes of tomato leaf green mandarin and violet leaf middle notes of tuberose frangipani frangipani never know how to say that and violet and base notes of musk, sandalwood, and cedar. And then the top notes for bluebell are tomato leaf, violet leaf, green mandarin, middle notes of bellflower, violet, tuberose, and frangipani again, base notes of sandalwood, musk, and cedar. So as you can see, these have the exact same notes in them. This one just has that added bellflower note. Now, I can't really speak too much on that as far as like what it smells like, because I have no idea what a bellflower smells like. But after watching some videos about this perfume it seems like bluebell or bellflower is a very rare note that is never really used in perfumes now as far as scent difference um i'm gonna spray these out i will never get over the scent like every time i spray it out i just like you need to give me a second because <laughs> oh this scent just does something to me i freaking love that but let's spray out bluebell the sprayer on this is like, I think it's kind of broken. It's kind of like spitting at me, but anyways. They smell, I would say 90% similar. Not so much in the opening though. In the opening, I get a little bit of like a sharper, slightly more floral feel and slightly more fresh feel in this one whereas the original pop just opens up a little bit more sweet in my opinion still has the original dna of this especially once it dries down but that bluebell or bellflower note is definitely in here it's much much more floral but it's still in a really good type of floral way it's still not like mature or anything like that i am going to be definitely wearing this because i do like it but nothing compares to this let me just say that nothing compares to this by the way this is like my second bottle of stella mccartney pop and i'm so happy that i was able to find this in the huge bottle this is a scent that i will forever be repurchasing in my collection if I were to get rid of every single one of my perfumes and somebody was like, you have to only keep one perfume ever to wear for the rest of your life, that's how much I love it. If for whatever reason you don't like this, which that's a crime in my book. But if you don't for whatever reason and you like more floral scents, more fresh scents, I guess, then this will probably be for you. It definitely smells like the color purple it's so weird but when you smell this it smells like purple and this also kind of has slightly more of like an earthy green vibe to it so that is the difference between these two if i had to pick one so that is stella mccartney pop bluebell the next perfume is a cheapy but a cheapy that smells expensive and i don't know what took me so long to buy it this is hugo boss deep red so this is like a super underrated perfume, but is a gem. I think I found this at Nordstrom Rack for, 
I think it was like $30 and it is the 100 ml bottle, but I have even seen it at Walmart, I've seen it at Marshalls. It's very discounted basically is what I'm trying to say. So Hugo Boss Deep Red smells exactly like what the name is. It reminds me slightly of Hypnotic Poison by Dior, but it is like way, way, way less intense than Hypnotic Poison. Like doesn't even come as close. This is so, so sexy. Exactly what you think of a perfume that was called Deep Red to smell like. It smells like the color red. It smells intense. It's very sweet, but it has like something unique in it. So this has top notes of blood orange, black currant, clementine, pear, and mandarin orange. Middle notes of ginger, ginger flower, tuberose, freesia, and hibiscus seed. And base notes of vanilla, sandalwood, musk and california cedar this is somewhat spicy although the spice in here is not that pronounced in my opinion like i wouldn't categorize this as a spicy perfume because i i personally don't smell that honestly to me this starts out very sweet and it ends off very sweet i know in the top notes you get a lot of citrus but i more so get that black currant more than anything and then the ginger does play somewhat of a role in here but not intensely. I do get a bit of tuberose, but in a very pretty way. Very, very sweet. I don't really get freesia. I don't really get hibiscus seed. And then I definitely get all of the base notes. I pretty much smell the base notes even when this first opens up. Like, I almost feel like this is sort of a linear fragrance in a way because I smell the bottom notes almost immediately. And you definitely get that vanilla, intense vanilla, the sandalwood tiny bit woody type of scent. This is a very sexy going out date night type of perfume. Like I said, it gives me hints of hypnotic poison, but this is more versatile. Like you could wear this during the summer on a summer night out to dinner or something. Whereas hypnotic poison, you will literally choke <laughs> if you wear that in the summer because it's just so thick. This is dense, but it's not as like thick and in your face as hypnotic poison. Like I would say, this could be worn all year round, although it is like borderline a little too sweet. This is a really nice creamy vanilla that has a lot of depth to it and a lot of complexity to it. It smells very, very high end. It does not smell like the price point that it has. And I definitely think that this is a gem coming out of this house. It is so beautiful. I can't stop sniffing it. This was a blind buy for me and when I got in my car and I smelled it, I was like, oh yeah, okay. Like, I definitely made a good decision picking this up. If you love sweeter, sultry, sexy type of scents, this will definitely be for you. This is Hugo Boss Deep Red. So the second to last perfume before I get to my amazing dupe. This is another cheapy, but it smells amazing. This is Michael Kors Sexy Blossom. I picked this up because again, I've been on like this floral fresh kick lately, which I never thought I would ever say. But this is what this perfume looks like. It's a little one fluid ounce version, so it's pretty small. Usually it's like a tall bottle, but I really love the packaging. Ugh, smells so, so, so good. This is another like perfect, perfect spring time scent. For the people that are not so into fresher floral scents, I feel like these are safe blind buys for you because they still have a lot of sweetness and sexiness to them and not like mature, mature florals, like very day-to-day, -day, not outdated type of scents. So Sexy Blossom has top notes of lychee, not lychee, but lychee, green leaves, dewdrop, rose petals, metal notes of peony, lily of the valley, freesia, and orchid, and base notes of musk, and broxen and sandalwood. Something that I've come to find out is that I love the scent of peony. Um, I never know how to say it though. Peony? Peony? I don't know. It's like a very sweet floral to me. It's not an outdated vintage type of floral. It smells very fresh, but it has sweetness to it. And you'll see how much I love the scent of Peony in my next perfume as well, but we'll get there. I'm getting really excited to share that perfume. But before we get there, this has that Peony scent to it and it's so pretty. This has a ton of sweetness to it. It definitely has that floral aspect. It definitely has freshness to it. But I also find this sweet, which I absolutely love. Again, this is another effortless girl next door type of scent. Very much inoffensive springtime scent. It's a very like fun, flirty. It's again that type of like versatile scent that could be worn in any occasion. It smells like it just freshly rained. It smells like a bowl of fruit at the same time. Like I find it very, very fruity, sweet, 
fresh and it definitely falls in the same category of Chanel Chance Otondra. I wouldn't say that they're dupes, but they're definitely like in the same type of scent family. So we have made it to the last fragrance of this video. I'm dying to show this perfume to you guys. So for all of my floral haters out there, which I get, okay? I used to be a floral hater. Don't be scared when you read the title of this perfume. So this is from the house Floral Street and this perfume is called Wonderland Peony. So again with that peony. This perfume has such a unique packaging. I would say that this is like my most unique packaging of perfume ever. Basically the message behind this scent, it says, welcome to Floral Street, a modern British fragrance experience powered by flowers. Our fine fragrances have been exquisitely blended by one of the best perfumers in the world because we care for our environment we have created sustainable packaging and our products are vegan. So this is another one of those clean perfume type brands and you can find this at Sephora, just like Skylar is or the Seven Virtues. The way that you open up this perfume, so it has this little elastic which you just take off and then you just slide out the little um, carton. But look at this. It was so funny because yesterday I was going over to my parents' house and we were at the gate and the little person at the gate, I, I was kind of like holding this like this because I was about to open it and she was like, oh my god, what are you eating? And I had to tell her it's a perfume. It literally looks like a little to-go box, but that's just because it's sustainable packaging. So this perfume looks like this so definitely kind of scary for a person that doesn't like florals because this literally has flowers on the packaging the whole freaking perfume has florals all over it i believe that this is a peony correct me if i'm wrong but i'm pretty sure that's what this flower is so anyway the name floral street wonderland peony all of these florals scared me which is why i never looked into this house ever until I was watching a video from Amy Glam here on YouTube and she was doing like a spring perfumes video and she was talking about this scent and I was like, oh, Floral Street, Wonderland Peony, I'm not gonna like that. And she starts talking about it, she shares the notes and when I read you these notes, and when I tell you what perfume that this is a dupe of, you guys are going to fall in love with this scent, I promise you. In the top notes, this has guava, red berries, and Sicilian lemon. Middle notes of raspberry bloom, peony, and violet. And base notes of cotton candy, vanilla, resins, woody notes, cedar, and vetiver. How amazing does that sound? Because to me, when she read off the notes, I was like, sold. I'm going to not run, not walk, but I'm going to swim to Sephora to go and buy this. This actually kind of scared me when I first opened it because I was looking at this little cap and I was like, where's the sprayer nozzle? Like, did, did I get a bad one? But it's actually the cap, you take it off. So this perfume is a dupe, like straight up a dupe of this guy right here, Mac candy yum yum which is impossible to find and i know that because i was looking for links to link in the video where i was talking about this and then i talked about it in my husband rates my perfumes video which he also gave this a 10 out of 10 he loves this stuff definitely go watch that video to see how much he loves this stuff but a lot of you guys when i shared this perfume were asking me like please let me know a link where i can find candy yum yum like i cannot find it anywhere so as soon as i smelled this perfume i was so eager to make this video so that i could let you guys know that this smells like mac candy yum yum they both have that guava note they both i believe have cotton candy in them they have a lot of similar notes but even if they didn't, they literally smell identical. This one is almost slightly a bit more zesty or like, not zesty, but I guess a bit more, more tart in the opening. It does dry down very sweet, but this one is always sweet. Now it is floral slightly, but very, 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 very sweet florals. Almost like candy floral. It smells like candy the way that Candy Yum Yum also smells like. And thanks to Amy Glam, I now have this in my collection and it will forever stay in my collection. My husband obviously loves this because he loves Candy Yum Yum so much and they smell so similar. But I mean, the notes in this perfume just kind of gave it away. Like I knew just by reading those notes that I was going to fall in love with this. I love guava. It's one of my favorite perfume notes ever. It just makes every perfume so sweet it kind of gives them like not a really a tropical vibe but 
I don't know, just like a fun, summery, upbeat type of scent. It almost smells like candy to me. It's so, so, so like mouth-watering sweet. It has a ton of berries. It has that peony, which again is a very sweet floral that I really enjoy. And then this has that dry down of the cotton candy mixed with the vanilla. This does not give you like pink sugar cotton candy. Like it's not like that so sickly sweet and like just straight up sugar type of scent. Like this has so much more to it. And then it does have that slight little woody dry down, which you guys know how much I love woody dry down. There's nothing that I don't like about this perfume. So I got so excited when I found this because like I said, this is discontinued. So once I run out of this, I'm probably not going to buy another one. I'm sure somebody has probably listed this off of like Mercari or something, but they're probably making bank out of this because it's so hard to find. So people are probably like upcharging like crazy. But now I know that I can just go and get another bottle of this every time I run out of this and it'll basically be my replacement. If you could only get one perfume for the springtime that you'll wear throughout the whole season, it should be this perfume. It's just absolutely stunning it is a little bit more on the higher end side but it's still not as as high end as a lot of like super designer perfumes are the 1.7 i believe bottle this is the standard size for this perfume and this was i believe 85 dollars so i mean it's not cheap but it's also not like crazy crazy it actually stays on for a really good amount of time I'm so excited to be wearing this basically all springtime. So that is the Floral Street Wonderland Peony Perfume. All right, so that is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys loved these new perfumes. And let me know what you guys thought of this dupe. Definitely at least go in store and smell this guy out just so that you can kind of get a feel of what this one smells like because it is so hard to find. And I'm saying that to all of you that asked me about where to find that fragrance. Well, now you can find it. But anyways, that is it for me today. Please make sure that you are subscribed to my channel and turn your post notifications on and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.